Hey, and hello, everybody. Welcome to, speaking of Schmodown, a movie trivia uh, talk show, a sports talk show for movie trivia is what it is. Uh, man, we got a lot going on today. Uh, we, we moved the show up because obviously we got the free-for-all coming up. Uh, we're not going to go during that. There's no way I want to watch it. I don't want to be on a show during that. Uh, we got a great lineup for you guys, but uh, really quick before we do that, I'm going to make a couple of uh, big announcements here. Got a couple new shows coming to this channel here. Uh, both of them not related to Schmodown. Um, the first one here, uh, Sarah is host of this show with me. Well, she's host. I'm her co-host. Um, it's called Go Get That Rose. It is a Bachelor Nation show live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube, and we will be on the stereo as well. Uh, we uh, we talk about The Bachelor, uh, ev whichever season it is, you know, you know, whether it's Bachelor in Paradise, whatever it is. Uh, we talk about it, but not not as much as we make fun of it. And we've changed up the format a little bit. Um, we, this show was originally on Merc with the Movie Blog. We're now moving it to this channel, the Jcast Network. And uh, we're changing up the format a little bit with this. Um, we're going to have some segments on there, um, kind of like this a little bit, but we're going to have some segments. Uh, one of the segments, I will say, is involving a fantasy league that we're doing with it. Sarah, myself. Uh, two shows, uh, friends of the show, Kaylin and Pookie are also in it. And we've got a lot of stuff, uh, that, that we can make points and lose points off of, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, it, we just got a lot of craziness. Uh, just trust me. There's a lot of craziness in there. Uh, that is a show worth making fun of. Uh, so again, that is go get that rose. And, uh, that will be out here in June. Um, uh, it's a bachelor nation show. So please join us for that. But the, the one I'm maybe even more excited for, and mostly because of the crew that I have for this. Okay, so uh, when the Bad Batch starts here uh, in a couple weeks, next week, actually, uh, May 7th, we will be bringing you the Mad Batch, a Star Wars shit show. Now, I say that because I'm, I have nothing against review shows. I have nothing against recap shows. I just personally don't enjoy doing them. Um, I don't, I don't like going in a chronological order and step-by-step -step manner. I just like to sit down like I'm in a living room with my friends having a conversation about it. If you're watching the show that we're talking about, chances are you already watched it anyway. So we don't need to worry about spoilers or nothing that, and I like to go off the rails. Uh, I like to get crazy. So, uh, to help me with that, uh, some of you may be aware of Dean Lewis, um, whoop, whoop. how you doing Dean? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. I'm broadcasting from the dusty plains of my back garden. I've got a regular moisture farm going up in here. I'm excited to talk about the Bad Batch, you know, Mike, Bobby, Carol, the whole bunch. I can't wait to talk about this group of unlikely heroes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, um, also on the show with us will be Sean AFK. Uh, who has done some other shows uh, and, and done some shows with us, such as Oh, What a Marvel over on uh, Merc with the Movie blog. He Check wasn't out. here today, but he will be on that show. Sarah, who I just mentioned, uh, she will be on the show sometimes at least. But another full-time crew member that we've got, Paige Frabetti, everyone. Yes, that is right. Paige, full-time <laughs> on the show, The Mad Batch, a Star Wars shit show. Um, and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, Paige, thank you. When I asked you to do this, you were totally excited. So, Oh, man. I mean, I live, breathe Star Wars. I could never compete in the Star Wars division for the Schmodown. For the fact that I get to talk Schmo uh, Star Wars with you guys, I mean, I got to represent. I got, whoop, can't see with the mic. I got my Rebel statue, so I got to represent guys with you guys. So thank you guys so much for letting me join in and be able to talk this Star Wars shit show. So. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. And yeah, anyone who's familiar with anything I do, I tend to go off the rails and I don't really care. Um, I, I care more about having fun and who I'm with than I do about uh, uh, making sure everything is this clean, polished piece of art. So uh, uh, and that being said, we do have a, a part time member of this crew who will be on every other week. You guys know him as well. Thomas Harper, everybody. Thomas Harper, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm not at my home base of operations, so it's all. We'll see if this works. <laughs> well, it's working so far. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. Not only for this announcement of this new show, again, the Mad Batch, a Star Wars shit show. I'm not sure if you saw, but here's the uh, 
there's a little logo for it there, Thomas. Nice. nice. Um, I like it. Uh, you're going to be on every other week and, uh, and it's going to be fun, man. Uh, I, like I was saying, it's, it's, it's got shit show in the title for a reason. Um, so, uh, Accurate. yeah, I'm just looking forward to this and, uh, Dean up here, uh, he's, he's also going to be on the show, um, page of course as well. And, uh, host of go get that rose. Sarah will be on from time to time. So, uh, big de- de- of- define big. <laughs> um and and also uh we we are going to get into speaking of smowdown like here in one minute like right now but uh we are going to have thomas and Paige are carrying over into that as guest co-hosts today uh so you will see them the rest of the show dean dude you you're you got a lot to uh to prep for you're gonna be up late tonight so get your coffee ready man yeah i'm kind of going for the layman vibe of, of this um perspective on this show i've still yet to um do clone wars so i'm going to be doing that kind of alongside kind of i've started already but i'm going to be running that so i'm going to kind of have the more the non-invested to canon approach i think which i think we need a little bit of that i think we need somebody who's not pushing up their glasses and correcting everybody i need thomas harper to get some glasses and correct me and <laughs> Paige so that we can learn and compete in the slowdown star wars Look, the, the Galactic Empire gave me LASIK, so, you know, <laughs> I gave them push Say, anything yeah. up on. Say what you want about them. They got the health plan. Yeah. That's right. Well, Dean, thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy Can't the wait. Day, man. And, uh, oh, and- man, it's going to be great. I've got the sun, I've got the free-for-all, and i got some Clone Wars, a lot of Clone Wars, and I will see you soon. Great meeting you guys. Nice to and- meet you. Um, good luck with the rest of the show. Hope it's not too much of a shit show because I heard Jay likes those. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, Dean Lewis, everyone. Uh, so that that is your that. Uh, like I said, myself, Sean Page, and Dean will be the full time crew of the Mad Batch, a Star Wars shit show, starting May seventh, six thirty p.m. Eastern time, live. And uh, now let's get into Schmodown, and we're going to bring up from Schmoes of the North. Soda. There he is. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Give you a hey, hey, hey. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're not even going to waste time getting into this, man. Today is a huge day. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait for free for all. So uh, are you ready back there, Frenchie? Because we, we got a game we play here called Hot Matches. It's a, a hot potato kind of deal. Um, and uh, the way it works is... Uh, we will talk about the matches, and Frenchie has periodic times pre-planned in his head. And whenever those times come up, whoever is talking will be eliminated, removed from the screen, and they are out. Uh, we keep doing this until there is one person standing, and the consequences of this game and the reward for the winner will come to play in the interview, which I will explain when that time comes. Okay, so... Um, Let's see what what match was first. It, it was Beth May and uh, and Jessica. Sloth. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very impressed with it. See, I always say that though when the rookies, when, it's nothing against you guys, but when <laughs> when you've been watching uh, other people play for multiple years, and then you you see these new people come in and you've never seen you guys play, it, it, it's not hard to be impressed. You know what I mean? And that's not a knock on you guys, but it's just it's new. And it's they're good matches. They're not matches. I'll be honest. Sometimes uh, I used to think that perhaps the matches would be a little duller because they aren't these big names that I'm used to. <clears throat> the names have nothing to do with that, and I'm quickly realizing it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, oh, Thomas, go, go man. No, no, you got it. Go for it. I mean, I think that's like the coolest part about the uh, adding the rookies in this season is that a lot of people don't know what to expect. So I feel like that's when people should be tuning in the most right now to see what they're going to get out of it in a sense. And I mean, for example, for myself, like there's no uh, film tape on me. So when I'm people are watching my matches, I hope they're just coming in and getting ready for a good time because I'm trying to give a show and I'm trying to win. So I think that's the best part about it is showing people what we've got in a sense, because we've been fans for so long. So it's now time for us to prove ourselves. So, yeah. And it's, uh, I would say, as a fan of the Schmodown before I played Schmodown, this season has been fun for like two ways, right? Like as a fan, I get to tune into a match with my own faction mate and see stuff, see folks that I've never done. Paige 
your match with Peggy was great because that you know I've seen Peggy in action in our our mock matches and stuff, but it's just not the same as seeing somebody going at it in the middle of a live match. And so that's been really fun from a fan perspective. And it's like every week, I don't think we've gone a week where we've haven't had somebody new that that's playing. And that's yeah. from a fan perspective, what more can you ask? And then as a player, it's like, like I'll, I'll speak just from the dragon con perspective. It's been funny watching people talk about dragon con as if it's like Wakanda or something like that. Like nobody <laughs> could ever penetrate this this like trivia competition and and the the big mystery surrounding us when it's just star wars questions right so from uh from our perspective it's cool as well because you know i know Paige knows this like you're prepping internally you know how you're doing you know how your faction mates are doing but watching them go into battle is really really fun so like seeing jessica's match this week was a blast because like you know, you know, you, you know how some of that shaped up, but you don't know how it all played out on screen. So it's yeah, keep talking, dude. Keep talking. Because the point is- once they hit record, yeah. Once they hit record, everything <laughs> changes. Once the match goes live, yeah. Whew. <laughs> yeah, I I really enjoyed this um, because it, it gave us a taste of who these people are. Because, like you said, yeah. there's no game tape. Uh, Beth May, like I mean, she has her podcast. That's where I knew her from. So I was actually it was, I was it was fun to see that translate over. Onto the screen, I think her and Koi it, it, it is is absolutely perfect. She's the female Koi, in my opinion. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that she was perfect to be on the Mercs. Exactly, and uh, <laughs> and 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 Jess again uh, did know her from Eve going into this, so it was fun to see her compete. Uh, she did good. Um, I'm curious to see where she's going to go from here. Uh, just because I don't know if it was shyness or what, but she seemed a little reserved on, on screen. I don't know if that's the character. Oh, and he's out right into I the mean, rancor pit. Matt. I mean, I will say in the in that game. I mean, personally, like I always play along when the games are on, when the matches are on. I always play along because one, I'm getting to see my competitors play, and I'm testing my knowledge as well. But watching them play and stuff, and then them both getting opponents' choice. I mean, in your first match, what can possibly <laughs> go wrong? And that's what happened. So, I mean, kudos to them because they held up their own as best as they could, I guess, in a sense. So, yeah, I, the the moment where Jess spun and then she's like, "Well, there's a lot of great wars." <laughs> <laughs> you could tell she had. Can I swear? She definitely yeah. had the holy fuck face. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn it! Like. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yes, that was a great match, but uh that Jacob Bancroft and uh or Jacoby Bancroft and Jacob London, um I have never these are two guys that I've never heard of uh either. I, and I've heard very little about them coming into the this match. Um what were you guys' takeaway from these? See, I love how I get to do that. <laughs> uh for me, I mean, another one of the fan leaguers trying to prove that they're hot shit. But, I mean, hey, did a good job. I mean, I have visited Australia. I am a huge fan. I even tweeted about it the other day, how badly I want to go back. So, personally, I was rooting for Jacob because I wanted to see what the Aussie could do, and he stood his ground. They both did. They both gave an amazing. Oh, Oh, look at that. See, the lawyer can be quiet for a little bit and wait till the right time to pounce. You know, I like that that was a, a tight match. That felt like a match between two veterans. And it ended the way so many epic Schmodown matches ended. Like it, it wasn't that he just had a brain fart, but he just got ran into a couple movies that he hadn't seen before. And that's the the death kiss of of single. Oh, what? What? What just happened? <laughs> Did we have a glitch there? What just happened? You won, Jay Wade. You won, <laughs> dude. I I was letting him talk as I like. He- and you won. That was a good strategy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm looking over here. I'm moving and rearranging my notes and looking to see exactly how much time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm the only person here. I'm like, what the hell happened? I won. Enjoy your empty victory. I was literally <laughs> telling you last night, Jay. I was like, I talk too much. So I'm Dude, screwed. So- <laughs> He's going to Disney World. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It's the first time I've won this game. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I was ever eliminated first. <laughs> hey. Soda, where is your Bruins jersey, by the way, man? It's in my oh. closet. Do you want me to go get it? Uh, he's he's he, waiting he on a be wearing it. jersey door. Dude, what, do we, 
I mean, I haven't watched like the last game that we played, but I mean, we are on like a six game winning streak. Uh, we'll put it on just for you, Paige. I'll be right back. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> you can remove me from the stream again. <laughs> <laughs> What's what is your go to sports, Thomas? I love hockey's my favorite sport, but it's the oh Carolina no, what? Hurricanes. all right. So we're getting it along such great that uh, well, such great, so great. On, Don't worry, Jay. Uh, wait, I love event. baseball too. I grew up playing it, so I'm an equal opportunity <laughs> lover. So hey, hey, nothing hey, beats hockey. The one who took us off exactly. the rails. I mean, it was Paige, and then talking <laughs> out. Uh, oh well, uh, but but yes, back to the showdown talk as you guys out on jersey and, and hockey and look at that you just got 10 times more beautiful and just for just in that background. Jersey. yeah i appreciate you being a shill thank you he'll, he'll switch it up every like 10 minutes he'll switch jerseys for us okay i could i could do that i could do that <laughs> um, just read the comment been on screen today <laughs> yeah, how, how much did you pay snark to push post that frenchie <laughs> oh my gosh you schmoes of the north <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh yeah, whenever we invade, we invade. <laughs> hey, I We're love Canadians it. for you for a reason. At least they do it respectfully, you know. Of course. <laughs> We're, the, We're the nice invaders. <laughs> yeah. Uh hey, let me ask you guys. Uh now this JTE and Ben Goddard match. Um kick, kick David kick Dagan out of this. That's, yep. that's what is he uh, talking? Nonsense right yeah. now. I'll go Blackhawks just because I always like their logo. So mm -hmm. Blackhawks. It is a sick there. jersey, I will say it that. So yeah. that's yeah. as far as I'll go. <laughs> no, yeah. I was I was actually I don't know I was torn on the JTE and Ben Goddard match um it, only because do we haven't seen JTE play for so long and and even when he did play I mean he, I'm not he was never like bad but he's notorious for you know guessing and stumbling a little bit and Mispronunciation. <laughs> well, he did. You got, you well, got he all did. of that in this match. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He, I mean, he, what did he say? Eddie uh, Dalton? Andy Dalton. Andy, Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. 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 That's what he said. I'm like, dude, yeah, Thomas he, Dalton. He, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> he went no. somewhere else. I don't even know where. I like Notre yeah. Dame spelled N O T E R. <laughs> yeah. I can't say shit, though, because I mean, one, I am from Boston as well. And I will say off the bat, we are horrible spellers and we are horrible at pronouncing words. So <laughs> I have JTE's back a thousand percent on that. So I can't. It's not a spelling, good to know. Though, but it's just funny to, to see what comes yeah. out of his brain onto the whiteboard. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything too ridiculous like Triceratops, but I mean, it was the greatest <laughs> hits in JTE. And I had him going into the, in the match because going in I it seemed like everybody was kind of JTE out because he's been gone for a while but I'm like yeah. no he was good in the old era imagine when he gets start studying and then look at the match the match was the proof of the pudding like it was a good match and JTE showed that he's he's still good yeah, yeah. and I you know I in that I, I think he rightfully had the narrative uh based on where he's coming from but also I was really impressed with Ben. And I don't, I don't say that completely as a den shill, but he played the hell out of that match with mm -hmm. or with, I mean, you know, people are like, well, you got wizarding world in round two. Well, JT got, uh, what martial, martial arts. arts movies. So yeah. they both got, yeah. I mean, it, them, that might've might as well have been two opponents choice or two, uh, two spinners ben, choices. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it balances out, but he played his heart out and just had that, that slight miss on a kind of an obscure movie, even mm -hmm. though it came out in 2018. Yeah, um, I was I was deeply impressed with Goddard, and and again, that's not yeah. to say I, that I don't think he is a good player. He's he's proven that, you know, from his first match and on to now. Uh, but even though I was weary about JTE because he hadn't played for so long, I was kind of thinking maybe he would he would just come in and steamroll Goddard. Maybe uh, I don't know why I thought that. I have no idea, but I, I do want to ask you guys. I've never heard JTE refer to it as JT me before. <laughs> I, I think yeah, that was actually, the first time. I mean, <laughs> yep, he definitely copyrighted that one. Trademarked that oh for sure. <laughs> yeah, Jericho has no chance at all of ever stealing the name of that JTE. There's no way. No, <laughs> it's stuck <Come> forever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a great thing, though, also about the new season – that the game is involved, like evolving so much in a sense. So even if you've been gone for a while, if you're still watching along and you're studying your butt off as much as you can, you're going to be in there trying to play your butt off. And that's why I think both of those players came in and 
gave two great performances. I mean, they both went per I mean, like we did say, they kind of it felt like they kind of got spinner's choice in mm -hmm. round two because they both knew those categories really well. But they both went perfect and they both went to their five pointers, right? Yeah, they both went yeah, to their five did. pointers in round three. And I mean, those are the matches you want to watch. That it goes, yeah. it's all the way to the end on who's gonna win. Yeah, and yeah. GTE showed just how much of a veteran he is with his final answer because like he admitted in the interview, I knew it right away, but I just wanted to make Ben sweat. Oh, did he? <laughs> when people do, I mean, he definitely did, but I mean, when people do that, I'm just like, hey, yeah. you never know. <laughs> yeah. I did I it say, once. <laughs> and, and pulling back the curtain just a little bit, the, the improvement that I've seen from Ben from the start of our, our faction prep to his match was readily apparent. I know that, you know, he played really well. That's apparent to everybody that watches, but just having seen him go from session to session and really not just study himself, but help other folks in the faction, it was on display. So if he's, if he's out there, if he catches this, I mean, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It just, you know, you, you, you blink a little bit at the end and miss this one. So it's, you know, one in one records, nothing to be ashamed of here. No, no, overall I'd say it was probably the match of the, might be, might've been the match of the week in my opinion. Oh, wow. Soda, I was just about to ask everyone what they thought the match of the week was. Dude. Well, well Soda gave his answer first. Yeah, Thomas, yeah you you're done. Now. <laughs> uh, Thomas, so what do you think? Uh, what would you call the, the match of the week? Hi, Peggy. That, I, I have to say that the Bancroft-London match was just – that was just exciting. It was, like, it was like watching a Star Wars match but in singles, and you don't get mm. that a whole lot. And – I like my experience watching singles is like most people's experience watching Star Wars. I'm like, I, I feel like <laughs> I've never seen a movie at the end of it. And so to watch them just duke it out and slug it and, and whether they were guesses, some, you know, sprinkled in there or not, you didn't know that because they answered with such confidence. So um, I thought that was a heavyweight match that felt like you were watching two folks that had been in the league for a long time. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Honestly, exactly what Thomas said. I think, Jacob and Jacoby's match for me was at least the match of the week because they were two rookies, but they played like vets. Mm. They both came in hot and they knew their stuff and they were very confident with those answers that they were giving at all times. So yeah, that's, that's why I said it might be the best for me because it's like really one, a one B they were both really good matches and yeah, yeah you're what was you, a vet match and one was a, yeah. And everything you said about the J Jacoby and Jacob match. Yeah. You guys were all spot on. They, they played like vet, like multi-year veterans. See, I, I'm actually going to go with the Beth May Jessica Schloth match um, uh, for two reasons. One, because I absolutely love Beth May's character work. It just it's so fun to watch, <laughs> and uh, and well, the obvious reason I won't lie because Jessica is guest today. So, um, but no, uh, because because she did, she's so calm and cool the whole time. I mean, she did not seem mm -hmm. to sweat whatsoever, and. Yeah. and that was that was really cool, man. So, but I'm gonna go with that match, man, for those two reasons. Uh, those are my picks. Yeah, it was a good, a really good slate this week. I mean, yeah. not having like a Friday night with the free for all being today, you still felt like you got a really good uh, cross section of stuff. Mm. It was a little weird though seeing all three of matches as singles matches because normally it's like you got an yeah. Indian we got Star Wars. It's like I don't remember the last time that happened. Yeah, I think that's also because we do have the Star Wars tournament and the teams tournament coming up in May. So I think they're trying to get as much out there right now for singles before they jump into that. Makes sense. And I mean, I'm yeah, assuming we're going to be getting plenty. Yeah, I feel like we haven't gone into geek them in a You'll little bit. You'll be sick too, of so. me. You'll be sick of me. <laughs> so you won't want to see me again until the fall. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to run through the whole bracket, Harper? Is that what you I mean? Doing? That's the goal. You don't come into the tournament. And you're like, well, I'd like to flame out in the first round. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I look forward to. Movie. I'm sorry. You know, I, I look at the bracket <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I look forward to, to recruiting some of those blind waivers onto Team Den, and then I look forward to, you know, my my pick is Ace in that match, and that's nothing against Sully because I think that match is going to be close. Mm. But uh, I look forward to ending his narrative and and putting him on the shelf until the fall. And then whoever like kind of climbs their way out of the mud on the left side of the bracket, um, I look forward to taking that hope that they have and crumpling that up and throwing it in a garbage compactor. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little specific, but I like it. <laughs> oh, Is that a Star Wars reference? I, like it. I think uh, so. Well, uh, a final thought here before we move on to Frenchie's Corner. 
uh, as you were saying, crush that narrative of aces, you know, that might also uh, think about, you could also affect the storyline within the Schmodown because let's be honest, if, if that happens and you, and you take out ace and crush that, that narrative, dude, it, it's also going to affect uh, the storyline within swag one way or the other, I would assume. Um it, it would have to. You're dead to me, Taco. Oh. <laughs> He's going to eat you. Uh, Taco, I'll, I'll say this. I know how old Anakin is, and I'm not going to misspell Tiderium. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll leave those little callbacks. To Shots fired. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, only, the only reason I know Anakin's age in the first one is because of the Weird Al song. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's the only reason I know their ages. I'm going to take a guess. Is it nine years old? Yeah. Eight. There you go. Nine. Yeah, no, it, it, Weird Al did a, uh, a cover of American Pie by Don McLean, but it's about the plot of, of, of Phantom Menace called A Long, Long Time Ago. So yeah, that's the only reason I know their ages because of the line in that song. I feel like winning or, or putting yourself ahead because of a memory, like you didn't study or something, that was a point that just you missed in your studying, but it's just stuck in your brain because of something weird like that. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, guys, that was a, that was a, first of all, that was a great game of hot matches. I finally fucking won. <laughs> um, and that's going to be the last time you win ever. <laughs> yeah, now I can get used to it. Questions yeah. for, uh, before she comes on screen, because I don't know, I, 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 I just, I, I didn't think of any questions. So Frenchie, write me up a couple questions uh, since you made me win. Um <laughs> He didn't I'm gonna ask it. all our secrets so I can say I'm a player. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Real quick, you bring that up. I, I was re-watching the uh De Melanta and uh um Damon title match, and I love when Chris or uh, Ellis does the, the test questions and asks their favorite movies. De Melanta actually answers it and Damon gives a pass. Uh I love <laughs> <it>. <laughs> smart man. <laughs> But uh, thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to bring on Frenchie and drop these fellas for a little bit and get to Frenchie's Corner, uh, which is a show that uh, has Frenchie trying to, I don't know, what he, he tries to win debates or something. I don't know. Uh, and am I supposed to be here? <laughs> yeah, but we, I want to keep you on because we have a very, very broad uh, segment. Oh, okay. By the way, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, so, yeah, the first topic Speaking today. Much, dude. Mais pourquoi? I want to know. On, on, mais sur version française de, de l'émission aujourd'hui, <laughs> on le fait sur aujourd'hui. Non, ok. All right. So the subject for today is free for all. Who the fuck wins? Now, um, Soda, since you are a special guest on Frenchie's Corner, I want to start with you. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, honestly, for me right now, the money based on his performance in last year's tour, free for all, and he's coming off a massive loss to Dan Merle. I'm going to go with Adam Collins. All right. Adam yeah. Collins. Not a bad choice. Not the right choice. Adam Collins has no oh. experience in free-for-all. The right yeah, choice. Yeah, he does. The, no, yeah, no, he no, does. no, 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 no. The right choice is the apprentice of the master of all free-for-alls, and that is the kid. The kid is learned. The kid first, uh, first appearance in free-for-all was that's what started his career and jumped it up. He's learned so much since this is his year. No, you're both wrong. Which, which I have to say, I find it adorable, Frenchie. How you you proceed, yeah. to, or you tell so he's wrong, and you proceed to tell why why you're wrong too. Uh, it's my job. There's only one clear winner, hands down. Brandon, the hitman, Hannah is going to take. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dude? He is dude. He is coming. He is coming, dude. If you have not watched his matches this season, you've not been watching anything of relevance, dude. He is coming, dude. And he is going to freaking take that fucking title challenge. And I, I would wager that he will use it on Star Wars. And, and, and just to answer Taco, because you're a smart ass, but I love you. Uh, yes, he has, he has no actual, like, real... The Hannah's event, the event free for all tackle. Horror is good, but so narrow. This is a whole different broader. I mean, you're right, but I mean, he does. It still counts as experience because it was the exact same format. Yeah, but we're not <laughs> the, the, the same competitors. It's a, it's it's a whole different thing. Fair point. 
saying anything. You should have just fallen in line right behind me right then on the spot. And and, and Jay, how much weed did you smoke before? Brendan Hanna winning the, tur the, the free for all? <laughs> like the guy you're constantly ragging on? Really? Dude, hey, today and today only <laughs> is no longer Baby Heel Hanna. He is Brandon the Hitman Hanna. And I'm serious, dude. He's a sleeper, man. He's a sleeper in this. And he is going to go all the way. Downtown Julie Brown, baby. I'm That's always a possibility of the Bibs yeah. winning. But uh, I, 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 I still oh, think yeah. I, I still think the apprentice of Bibiani. Uh, look, he's amazing. He's grown leaps and bounds. And at the right position, not like the first, right? Don't put him first. The, it, Bibiani can do that, and I think only him can do that. Mm -hmm. That being said, he goes like in twentieth, and he's learned enough now, and he's such a dominant player. It's his year. I'm you calling it right the now. Kid, the kid wins is if he's the last person to join yeah. the. Free -for -all. Oh, so you're saying he's a bad player? Collins wins. You're saying he's a bad player? Second to last person <laughs> to win the free for all, and everyone but him misses the question. That's so the only way. Uh, see, have you seen a match recently? Up, they could call Hannah's name first, and he will run through the whole lot, dude. Okay, so 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 we can he agree he's lost his mind, ball. right? Yes, he's lost his mind. Oh, but okay. if, if, if you've watched last night's episode of Schmodown Night in Canada, uh, Taco and myself, we were talking and we were thinking how cool it would be if a rookie won, run, ran the gauntlet and won. Yeah, that's... Because, I mean, we do know. have a rookie class this year that could oh, possibly do it. Yeah, dude, you guys well, are insane. But You're like Jay, 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 quit smoking spiked weed, okay? <laughs> okay, like, anything possible like, for the rookies, I completely agree. But the thing is, how many is there going to be, and how, how yeah. like, if they're being put like in second, it, it's going to be hard, right? So it really depends on the position, but it's always possible. Yeah. That Hannah, being that said, it doesn't matter what position Hannah is in, and it does matter for the kid in Collins. Like, all I right, said. Uh, for for next topic, we'll, we'll we'll try to go go away from this craziness here. All yep. right, next one is look, you win. Hannah wins. Yay for him. That being said, what is the easiest belt for a free for all winner to go for or to give to someone in a faction to make sure they win? Right. Um, that is, you know, they're, they're all good champions. Yeah. So the truth from it is, uh, real quick, a mind scratcher. We got Dan Merle in singles, teams, odd couples, Mara in IG, and uh, Demolanta in Star Wars. Dude, those are rough. Yeah. Rough. But here's my theory IG. IG because it's probably the most handed belt, right? So you just go statistically. I don't have the stats with me, but I think it would be the easiest route. Easier competitor? Fuck no. That no. is hell no. But when it comes to the, you know, limited type of uh, uh, of movies uh, some say it would make, make it harder but i actually think uh limiting the 100 you know where to look at so you go dive deeper in certain ones and there's bigger gaps right so i think that's one of the issues uh with uh keeping the belt in ig and for me they're all equal forces when it comes to, to retaining it mm -hmm. but systematically this is automatically the easiest one what about you guys See for me, I, uh, based on similar logic, I would probably say the teams, actually, because ever since okay. the Patriots lost, that one's been the most hot potato one. But it was shown that you can still defend. There's a way to defend it because they did it, right? No one really has been in a run that much for IG defending it, so it's more improbable what yeah. happens. Yeah, but I mean, but also if, like, say, a Colin, Collins could win, he could easily use that title shot for deception, right? Yeah, wait, before you blow a gasket, like, what, what crazy idea do you have? Well, I'm right not going to blow a gasket here because this one, unlike the other one, is far more obvious than Brandon Hanna is going to win the free for all. Uh, singles. Um, that, that singles belt has switched hands a lot. Yeah, late. but there's a lot more defenses. Count the number of defenses, Jay Wade. I understand, but I'm just saying, dude, right now that singles belt doesn't. No one owns that singles belt. That single belt, singles belt owns players right now. And that's, that's insane. Belt, I don't know. That's insane. Nah. Like, come on. No, no, no. You, you, you go for the more, you know, that, that's the thing. The more, because no, it's true. Like, I was going to say the more narrow, the harder it is. But 
you know, teams is not narrow. Yeah. It's just the fact that you're relying on two knowledge, right? So I say IG first, second team, singles is last. You're completely wrong, J Wade. Second singles is first, teams is second. Singles is only it's it's not a competitive thing. I'm not saying that that Merle is bad or can't do anything. It's nothing about him or his gameplay. It, it, it's the it's that emotional side. It's the other side of Smowdown that I often talk about that influences these things. That's what I think will come into play. And uh, I just think that uh, that that Dan Merle is going to be the one uh, would would be but right now. That would be the easiest title to go for. Okay. This was a much friendlier conversation. Good yeah. Lord. Okay. So, okay. We, we, we went down that. That's perfect. Okay. So, look. Uh, now it's time to have Paige and Harper joining the conversation. I'll drop out. Uh, and um, and J-Way will, too. And you'll continue to have a conversation with them about the subject for around five minutes. Okay? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Surprise! Well, yeah, very much surprised. I was the last minute addition to this. So, based <laughs> on those questions, what are your guys' thoughts? Who will win the free for all, in your opinion? Honestly, I would like it to be. I think it would be fun if it was a rookie because mm. I think that would be switching it up a lot, and I don't think a lot of people would be expecting that. Um, I mean. I guess we'll have to see. For when I it comes wait. to the belts, though, I mean, I think if people are smart, I don't know. De I mean, it depends who wins, in a sense, because you can win, but you can also hand your opportunity mm -hmm. to someone else on your faction. Like, if I won, I could give my belt opportunity to Amaru if he wanted to go against uh, Inner Geekdom. So you can give it to whoever you want on your faction if you don't want to take it yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you're kind of crazy if you don't take it yourself because you'll you may never get that opportunity ever again. So you yeah. should take what you're given in a sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited just to see. I mean, this is my favorite event of the year, uh, in the yeah, Schmodown. Uh, so I'm just excited to see who's in it. I think mm -hmm. more in a sense for myself. Yeah, and that's I, I'm the same as you is my favorite because it reminds me so much again with the wrestling stuff. It reminds me of the Royal Rumble where you get all these oh, competitors and you never know who's gonna show up. I it's always a fun time. Yeah. I was literally telling someone earlier because they asked me, they were like, What is the free for all? And I was like, It's the Royal Rumble, but with movie trivia and a lot less sweat. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. A little, <laughs> bit standing still, up under the still a little bit of sweat. Oh, there yeah. definitely is, but you just don't uh, have to rub <laughs> against some sweaty competitors. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the uh, Peggy story about getting hooked on Schmodown mm -hmm. after stumbling on one of the earlier free for alls, like that made me go watch a, an earlier free for all. And I, you know, I hadn't seen one before until she said it. And I was like, I see exactly why you fell in love with the Schmodown because of this event. And the fact that we're getting it digitally is is just awesome. I mean, they mm -hmm. could easily say like, "Well, we'll we'll see about later in the year. Maybe we'll do it." But um, it's here, which is awesome. I, you know, nobody's talking about Paul Preston, right? So yeah, I think I think it'd be amazing to see. You saw Paul's skills on display in his one match so far. He's sharp. He's not the Paul mm -hmm. of 2020. Uh, he's back to form, and and I think you could see him make a really deep run and and take that uh, take that belt. And I think his perspective on the game and his perspective on singles about how, you know, it's this, it, it's this small circle of folks just trading the belt back around. I would love for a guy like him that's worked his tail off to, to come in wreck shop in, a, in an event like this, get a shot at that title and finally achieve like exactly what his team name is. Mm -hmm. The outsiders be that outsider coming in. I, was, I think it'd be awesome if a rookie uh, took it as well. That'd be yeah. hilarious to see some like, I would, like it to, fall. Yeah. I would like it to be a uh, a rookie on the usual suspects, but <laughs> I, can't agree I guess we'll have that. to wait. I can't. I can't good. Good. And and really. and yes, <laughs> you're, you're right. Like a Paul Preston winning this would be amazing, and those are the stories that I enjoyed because yeah, Merle winning the last time was it, it's Merle, of course, but it's always fun to see someone you wouldn't expect have a great run. Like in the first one. We had John Humphreys, who out of nowhere like lasted the most rounds, yeah. and then then the same in second uh, free for all you had Bibbs doing his run, and then in the third one you had Bibbs going from one to the very end. Like it's those stories I, I like, and a guy like Paul Preston, I can definitely see him having a similar type run this year. I'm calling it now; he's going to be the MVP. I like that. I like, that. and that's not the shill in me saying that I like that. Yeah, that's, that's honest. 
Hey, he's back. Oh, it's time for me then. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, our guest is here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just hit puberty and everyone got to see it. Amazing. Uh, before we get to Jessica, uh, Thomas Harper has uh, has something he would like to uh, to let us all know about. Uh, sir, the floor is yours. Well, Y wings are the best. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I won't. I won't delay Jess because you guys are here to see her. I work as as many of you know outside of my my job in uniform in the army. I'm a Red Cross attorney, uh, so I work in the field of international humanitarian law. We've got a really special event on May 4th coming up. It's going to be uh, an event. Uh, where we present on Star Wars and international humanitarian law. So think like, you know, what did the Empire do wrong legally using the Death Star? Were they able to use it? Were Ewoks okay to eat their prisoners? That's sort of like really funny stuff. Um, my team's mission on the Red Cross is to help the Amer uh, help the United States stay in compliance with the Geneva Conventions. And one of the requirements under that treaty is to educate the American public about IHL, so the rules of war, for lack of a better term. And this is a great event to do that. Something, you take a franchise that everybody, well, most people love, most smart people, but everybody is familiar with, and you you look at scenes that you've seen a thousand times before, and you look at it in a new lens, in one that, that has some real world application. But it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's on May 4th at noon Eastern, and, uh, rarely can you say that in your lunch hour or in just an hour of your time, you can help the country achieve compliance with something huge like the Geneva Conventions, but you can do that just by logging on and watching. It's totally free. You'll get to see me talk for a little bit and, uh, and make fun of some stuff, and you'll get to see a couple of our other really talented team members, and you'll be doing it all for a good cause with nothing out of your pocket except for your time. All right. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Um, where say it one more time, if you could, where people can find that at. Yeah. So I'll be tweeting it out all next week. I've, I've already tweeted it out a little bit. So if you go onto my Twitter feed, you can find, uh, it, it's a cool poster with Luke squaring off against Vader and there's a zoom registration link that's there, but I'll make sure to, to post that out. It's, uh, um, easy to do. It takes about two seconds to register and it'll be a good time on May 4th. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. No, for, thank you for giving me the floor. I appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you for everything, man. Being here for your service for everything that uh that, that's that we got going on here. Um, Paige, Paige, thank you too. <laughs> she was looking down at her phone. Sorry, I had to pick on her. Uh, oh, I, I that was all. On. That yeah, was I was all liking off track. Just picking <laughs> on. I'm sorry. No, I'm I was sorry. I was on Twitter looking at what Thomas is what Thomas was talking about and I was liking it because I think that's a great cause and that's something amazing to do because I work in human you're services. Bully. So Jay Wade, you're a bully. Uh, <laughs> in a very kind way. But okay, get out of here. I won. Get her out of here. I won the game. Uh, and when I say won the game, uh, real quick, before we bring Jessica in here, the, uh, the consequences and rewards of our game that we played at the beginning is the winner, myself, I get to start the interview with Jessica and then uh, second place enters uh, a time later and uh, third and fourth place so on until everyone is on screen so without further ado Jessica Schloth from the den hello how are you I'm good how are you doing very good very good um first of all thank you for your time for being here really appreciate it um I am a huge fan of the den I'm a huge fan of Kate Mulligan's I'm a huge fan of Saul's mm -hmm. um Din, Din, Din is my favorite faction, I'll just say it. And that's the God's honest truth. Um, but, but something I would like to know, uh, was Kate, the, did you did you have any conversations with Kate before the draft? Um, and either way, was she the only manager that you had spoken with? Or if she was, was she the only manager you'd spoken with? It's funny. I think that most of the managers, when they picked their free agents, they knew it pretty early on or before it was announced. So I think a lot of those people were kind of like the middle men of it all. So I never spoke directly to any managers. <laughs> like it was always someone in between, uh, which was interesting. So I didn't really speak to Kate a lot. I think she kind of went off of um, the opinion of Ben, who I am a patron of, and I kind of had been studying with him. And so that was how I got to know Kate um, through him and then other managers as well. 
I never spoke to directly. It was like a player who said that they were like on behalf of this manager. So I kind of knew like the certain free agents that would get some of them that were getting announced before that happened because of that. (laughs) Um, Well, you brought up, you brought up a patron of, of Ben Goddard. Um, That brings me to the question. Did you, did you become aware of Ben through the Schmoes or did you become aware of the Schmoes through Ben or were they at the same time? How, how is your relationship or not relationship, but your, uh, your awareness of the Schmoes and everything uh, come from? Um, I found out about Ben through SEN probably. I used to watch that pretty often. Um, so that is what it was. <laughs> SEN Live? Yeah. Um, now what made you want to join the Schmodown other than obviously getting a little bit of training experience with, uh, with Ben, what was it that you were like, I'm definitely going to do this. And then I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Harper. Well, I watched, I've been watching the show since like 2017, I think. So I've been a fan for a while and I always like played along and, you know, at one point I never got anything right. And then like, you just started to pick up on things, like, especially when questions started getting reused. Um, and then I ended up going to live events and just got really like into it. And I still wasn't confident in myself enough to audition. I was like, these people have to be these like giant personalities and they have to be really good at trivia. And I don't feel super sure in either. So I was like, I don't know. But I'm very like happy for people who get that opportunity. And then Abby Friel reached out to me. And she, what kind of put me over the edge of like, yes, I should do it, is when she said like she would be really excited to have more people like her in the showdown. And I'm like, that's true. There's like no one. Like there's Paul Oyama, like <laughs> I'm not Paul Oyama, you know, like we're, so I think there is a certain like, especially with like the absence of the Shire Wolves, you know, like there needs to be more females. So I auditioned and that's how I got into it. <laughs> Thomas. Welcome. I was so excited hey, that I would get to be on. <laughs> Normally we, we just see each other in training sessions and, um, you know, somebody is under the hot seat. But I was, I made the comment earlier that I was so excited to see your match because I, you know, I knew the result ahead of time, but it's always really fun to see it play out. I want to ask, because I know what my sort of final few minutes look like before you go into the match, but it's always really interesting, the different stuff that people do. What was your final, without revealing any secrets, obviously, but like, what's your, your like final few minutes? Like, what are you doing to get in the zone before you sit down and and compete? (laughs) I was just trying to like, well, I was getting ready. I'm a procrastinator. So of course I was like trying to get like the last minute questions in, but then I'm also like, I wanted to look decent on camera because I knew people would be watching. So I was like getting ready, like putting makeup on. And I'm like, I have like five minutes left. It was like, got my water. And then I had like two minutes to be like, okay, breathe. <laughs> like it's about to start. <laughs> Everyone's going to be super nice. And yeah, that's how it was. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I also wanted to ask you, I, well, I wanted to tell you if you didn't hear my comment earlier, I, I said it in the DM after or our, our like faction DM after I watched your match, but your comment during the war movies spin, <laughs> like so many great war movies to choose from. I was like, cackling and my wife is like what are you laughing at i was like it's just a really funny joke at a really good yeah someone pointed that out and i was like oh yes my one joke of the match i'm glad (laughs) you enjoyed it (laughs) the the other question i'll ask before i I kick it to page was what was there a moment where you sort of locked in and and felt like you were in the zone and like okay this is it i'm i'm good i'm my nerves are under control and let's just do this thing why was half ex- not half expecting but going into it i was like what happens if i get nothing right <laughs> and someone's like <laughs> <laughs> right. and so getting just the first correct answer just like helped me to like get in and just yeah i was just along for the ride you know <laughs> nice page go for it well- Hey Jessica, nice to meet you. Hi, Paige. <laughs> I know I'm the I'm the only uh, suspect over here, so now I have the uh, Den all ganging up on me because Jay's a huge uh, Den fan. He's secretly obsessed with that. Uh, I do. Have- he just won't admit it, but <laughs> <laughs> if you can see it, 
right at my fingertip. It says usual suspects. There you go. Oh. I like it. Represent. Uh, no, but uh, nice to meet you. And I mean, I got to ask because, I mean, I'm a woman in the Schmodown too. So how does it feel kind of in a sense to bringing warm, more women and more diversity into the Schmodown? Like, what does that mean to you kind of in a sense? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It I just know feels really question. cool just like to be <laughs> part of this certain like group of like awesome women and like be, I feel like we're all in a little club, even like spiritually, you know? Um, I would say, yeah, cause I mean, you're it. young too. So, I mean, you're probably one of the younger Schmodown competitors, right? I would say. Yeah, I'm 23. So I think there's very few people who are younger than me. It was funny. I was like going through my match and I'm like, how many questions were asked before I was born? <laughs> I, well, that was that was gonna be one of my questions for you. Like, how do you kind of like prepare and study in a sense? Because, I mean, I'm only a couple of years older than you, but uh, for like in a sense, like for you, I'm assuming like you're like, oh my gosh, this some of these competitors have been alive longer than I've been born. So yeah, <laughs> how do I go against that? Maybe really study is an especially difficult category for younger people because a lot of the strategy behind it is someone will be like, oh, I graduated high school when this movie came out and I saw it in 82. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of the times that I don't, the range of that being able, me being able to use that is less, you know, cause it starts at 98, but um, yeah. So it's a lot more of studying versus using your experience and like background and like what you saw growing up. It's more of, you have to like dig, through filmographies and like look at that because you can't right. just rely on what you've yeah well, well you say that but you had two huge steals in the wheel round and those are i mean well big daddy is more of an older movie than kill bill volume two but do you want to know <laughs> yes the yeah. big the big daddy but my i think i would have if i don't i might have got i might have guessed 98 if it was just straight up but i know that the Sprouse, um, like Dylan and Cold Sprouse are in that. And I'm like, they can't be older than like five. I mean, they can't be younger than, you know, like they're around five or six in that movie. And I watched Sweet Life, Zack and Cody growing up. So I know they're about my sister's age. So I was like, they had to be born in like 93, 94. So I think they're like, 92. I think they're a year older than me. I was gonna yeah, say so I was like, like I was like if you're not a Riverdale fan you do not know this but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they couldn't have been five in 1995 you know so it was like later than that. Well, that would have been about the right age because they did play young Ben on Friends, so that would be yeah, it'd be about right. Yeah, hi, I'm Soda no. by the way. <laughs> soda, I'm not done asking questions. You get I get one more and then you go, okay, man? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I uh, know my last question for you though, Jess is. Uh, oh, she was serious. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I thought uh, I don't care, but I thought you were just picking on him, and then you. Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, Soda knows me, so we cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, uh, for you though, I mean, getting into the schmodown and watch being a fan for so long, in a sense, who is your favorite competitor? Like while watching, like who did you look up to, and who were your com favorite competitors to watch, in a sense? Um, so, like, the go-to answer because of my FSU background is Dan, but he's everyone's favorite. <laughs> so, I also really rooted for uh, the Shire Wolves when they were big, Those especially favorite, with, like, yeah. Rachel being kind of a more reserved person. Like, I, like I'm not, like, the most shy person in real life, It take, but it takes me a while to, like, warm up. And um, so that kind of, like, not being as comfortable on camera, I think. I can, she's very relatable, so. Um, yes. I've gotten to know her, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a surprise, which is gonna cut you off, thanks to Paige asking more questions. Than, than, <laughs> Sorry, no, let's sort of ask a question no, real quick. I, I feel bad. Here, I love shit shows, remember? <laughs> uh, you know, we do have a surprise, Sorry, so and, and you were up next, but everyone, Kate Mulligan, <laughs> the mother herself. Snap too. Holy crap, hello. 
Hello. How are you? Hi, Paige. I say hi to the one that's not on my faction first. Hi, Paige. <laughs> How you doing? Then I go to then I go to Jess and Thomas. You know, you, we have to be polite to the neighbors. You know what I mean? You yell at your own kids. You're polite to the neighbors. Hi, Jay. How are you? How's everyone I'm doing? Good. I'm very good. Thank you for uh, for your time here and uh, this little surprise for everyone. How you? Yes. Um, I'm doing great. I I was uh, I was half trying to work out this morning and then I uh, caught a glimpse of my belly and then I just sat down and gave up. <laughs> <laughs> you know who doesn't I do had that brownies Thomas for Harper. breakfast. That you had brown feel better. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Um, how many different states are we in right now? Uh, countries um, also. Uh, I'm in Ohio. Yeah. Is international? I think the none of us in the same place. We know Paige is in Boston. Yep. Boston, baby. <laughs> I'm in a different part of Pennsylvania than I'm normally in. I was gonna say, where are you at your in-laws place? I'm I'm up in the uh the Poconos to the mountains. Oh. So if my internet suddenly drops out, you'll know that a bear has attacked the house. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to find I, another Star Wars player. To it's honestly you. well, that's okay. I'm actually flying. <laughs> right now <laughs> that's not on the table <laughs> not finding any other star wars players other than thomas harper okay <laughs> i will get there as soon as i need to to protect you from the bears um i it's funny because i don't it's almost like i don't recognize your face without like all the paraphernalia behind you i know that's <laughs> the star wars yeah. paraphernalia yeah yeah it does I, look <laughs> I was gonna say with the bongs in the background that i just missed <laughs> yeah. <during> the <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All your and, all and, your sex toys behind you, Thomas. Oh, this is right. That yeah. That's my lightsaber. I swear. No. That's what the virtual <laughs> Star Wars background covers up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and hey, we were just talking about uh, about Jessica's match against yes. Beth Bay and and uh, her her season so far and uh, yes. her experiences in the den. Um, soda, uh, soda here is, it was the loser of our game. We play a game at the beginning of the shows. Now he was our loser. So he was the last one to come into the interview. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to hand it to you. Soda, uh, uh, get us into something here. Cause it is okay. your turn to have the floor. So, uh, hi, I'm soda. I'm the lone uh, non-American person here. <laughs> hi soda. Hi. Why do you sound American? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm Canadian. Some French so. fries. Oh, I was, was going to say, you're Canadian, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Canadian. <laughs> yeah. British Columbia, baby. Um, okay, there no, you go, BC. Yes. Uh, so, Jess, my question for you is, at what point during the match did the nerves go away, or were they there throughout the whole match? I think I kind of settled in. Like, the, the part that was nervous for me, the game, like, for what it was, like, I wasn't nervous for competing in the match. It's almost like I forgot and I also have to be prepared to like answer interview questions and like the in-betweens of the show. Like I wasn't as nervous for competing as I was for the, the, the show aspect of it. So answering the questions after I got my first couple right, I was like, okay, like I can do this. Um, so yeah, those nerves dissipated pretty quick. Nice. And then also, I have a question. Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Kate. No, I was going to say there was also a moment like I was actually surprised at how calm I, I'm, I don't think it made it to air. But there was a moment where like there was like a noise and you're like, is it my air conditioning? I'll go close. Like it was like in the middle of a question. You're like, I'll go yeah, close my door. You were like very <laughs> relaxed about that whole thing. Whereas like if anybody made any noise, like it might be like, stop. Like if the children are making noise or anything, I'm like, knock it off. Like you were very calm about like, I'll go close my door if you guys want. You seemed very <laughs> actually self-possessed at that moment. <laughs> And it wasn't I have even your air conditioner. I have a question for you, Kate. So when it comes to game day, uh, how do you help prepare a, a rookie uh, like like Jessica as opposed to someone who's played uh, a few years like a Paul Preston? It's it's sort of – it's actually the same. We um, th This year we are getting the wheel slices the morning of the match, and so mm -hmm. usually I try to talk with the player through the wheel and what um, if there's any last-minute studying we can do. I'm sure everybody's doing this. Uh, that's not like a unique <laughs> tactic. I I'm sure no factions looking at the wheel slice and being like, I'm not going to look at this, like <laughs> the wheels, you know? Um, but so that's, that's been kind of cool. And I think that's, that's a kind of a bummer. I, uh, I wonder if that's going to go away once the matches are live again, but somebody like Thomas, like they don't give a star Wars wheel in advance because star Wars wheel, you know, it's going to be yeah. like a bunch of the star Wars movies. And so, so we don't really have that. We don't get to actually sort of strategize about that. 
Um, but, you know, we sort of talked through the wheel slices and then the faction basically at that point takes over and it's like, all right, I can run some questions by you on this if you need or whatever. And it's, um, but it's the same, it's really the same, like, you know, same thing happened with Paul. We got the wheel and that day we were like, okay, what Paul, where are your, uh, where do you feel like your gaps are? And, you know, and then we go from there. So do you guys never get the wheel slices prior to this year? No, we never got the wheel. Oh. We get we oh. would get the wheel. We would know what we picked, but we would oh. never get the wheel. We never got to see the whole wheel. Okay. So, yeah. So that's I, yeah. I, I can see that being a major advantage this year for sure. And it's it's an equal advantage, with the yeah. exception of IG, it doesn't happen, and in Star Wars, it doesn't happen. Okay, so, it's, so it's it's not like it's not. I don't think it's changing <laughs> our game. I think it's changing everyone's game. Because Paige, you got your the wheel before the match, right? I didn't look at it. I didn't need to. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, no, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you see it, you you look at it, you talk with your manager, and you see what you need. You look at it, and you're like, all right, the ones that I think I need to study, I'm going to focus on those. And then yeah. and then you, you just feel comfortable. I mean, then again, the day, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I always yeah. say the Schmodown is like 75% luck. And then 25% knowledge because at the end of the day, you don't know what the cards are going to get dealt, especially in singles. You, it could be anything at the end of the day. So it's yeah. just trying to know as much broad knowledge as possible and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I feel like, uh, each of the divisions is so tricky in different ways this year too because like singles uh, singles and teams is just like you gotta know everything about everything yeah and then star wars i mean it's it's literally like what were han solo's thoughts before <laughs> yeah. like it's just like what kind of socks like, did he wear yeah yeah exactly i was like i got it i got it i got it, I got it. It's fine. I got it. Well, that, and that that's a good point because like start it, it's like pure curiosity literally the wheel goes up it immediately starts spinning and you can't see what wheel slices because it's all it looks you know it's all blurry mm -hmm. and then the wheel stops and before i'm even thinking about whether i'm gonna sit on the slice or not you're like what else is on here just out of it's like pure curiosity in our our division but like ig i can't i mean that's they're climbing a tough mountain because they have that same experience where you're like the wheel stops and then you're just looking like, okay, all right, that's helpful, I guess. And then you got to make your call. So it's, I, I don't envy the IG players at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jessica, I have a, I have a question. I like to ask uh, uh, some of the competitors. I like to ask, I, I have little questions I like to ask. Uh, but I'll ask you this one. What if year you, were you born, Jess? Are you old enough to be competing? Sorry, Jay. Was that <laughs> you drink alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can, but I cannot rent a car. Sorry, hey, Jay. that so was weird. Was a better direction, Kate, than I thought it was original. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, because no offense, Jessica, you're a lovely girl, but I am way too old for you. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, no I, was, I was not headed that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jay. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if I'm just like, if, oh, French, he's here. Hi, can you imagine? Um, Hey, good to see you. Could you imagine if I was just acting as the madam for my players? <laughs> I was like, Jay, do you see anything that you like? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. look that's like, what that's happened to this conversation? It was so league. down. Ella, I'll be honest with you. That's Saul, fella. He's looking pretty randy to me. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, uh, Frenchie just watches this train go right off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I swear. Like, for the Star Wars show, this is exactly what I meant by a show. <laughs> uh, but, but seriously, though, if you could pick any... In the in the entire history of Schmodown, any competitor to be on a team with, who would it be? Um, see, I should have thought about this before, but I haven't. <laughs> it's an easy question. You would have picked me. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> done deal. Because that's I always think about like the best teams are ones where um, they like complement each other. So it would be someone who's obviously older who has seen older movies than I have not and is more comfortable with that. Um, and then probably like, oh man, I don't know. 
You can just say me. It's okay. Any suggestions? <laughs> what do you guys think? If you were to ask me that question, I would say I would say Clark Wolf. Uh, she's probably my mm -hmm. all-time favorite player in the history of Schmodown. And and I want to come on, Christian Skybound. We need the individual, like the throwback merch. We need throwback yes. merch. <laughs> Dire Wolves merch. We need, dude. We need it. I need it. I, what am I saying? I want. It. <laughs> that's a that's actually I'm, a great idea. But the yeah. throwback merch, the, those proceeds go to the den, right? <laughs> we have our own separate pool. <laughs> yeah, we have our own separate pool, just the throwback, even though they weren't on the it's den. It's our idea, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's how I remember it coming out, at least. Jess, I would put you, if I could put you with anybody in the Schmodown, I would put you with somebody that is older, and I would put you with somebody that is louder, which is basically anybody, because you really do have a very <laughs> quiet presence. Not, and that, and, I, and that is not a dig at all. I just feel like, yeah. And so, like, who's like, who's your, who's your, um, because I like who, it's the Swiss cheese model. I say this all the time, but if you're a piece <laughs> of Swiss cheese and somebody else a piece of Swiss cheese and you put them together, you want there to be no no way to get through, right? So I actually who, thought about Roca as well, but because of like, there are certain players where I'll watch, like even when I like barely knew anything, like and I hadn't like studied at all, where they would get questions wrong and be like, how did you miss that? Like I knew that. Like it's obviously Aquamarine or something, and like, <laughs> and even in his most recent match, like him not knowing Will Smith, like that seems so obvious to me. But like he didn't yeah. know it, and I don't yeah. know. Certain. Meanwhile, yeah. when you if you got westerns with him, you'd be totally fine. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Adam was Adam another would, great one. Yeah, Adam would be a good one. Yeah, how Adam how you felt about those Roka questions? How I felt during your match when Beth missed the uh, Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did you guys talk about how great Beth May is yet, though? Oh, her, she's the female Koi. Oh, yeah, yeah. just a delight. Isn't she fits uh, perfectly in the quirks, I will say. Yeah, that. she really yeah. does. She's just such a dot. When she put, when one of her answers was the dragon, I was like, <laughs> 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 was it the dragon? Oh, my God. I wish oh. she had come with that Fu Manchu of whatever that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that kill. Uh, yeah, just does. let it dry and leave oh. it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah Mark, Mark Riley, Riley too. Would be great. Mark Riley too. Although Mark Riley, I mean, Mark also has a sort of relaxed energy these days too. Mark is sort of mm -hmm. like he'll sit yeah. back and answer the questions yeah. and like not take the bait, you know. See, yeah, I can see like best. a Paul Prince, Paul Preston too. Paul Preston, you know what? You're not wrong about that, Paige. Yeah. Listen, you guys on the same faction. You got us all sitting here trying to pair you up with some uh, Schmodown legends on a team. <laughs> when, when it we comes, to, team Riley, guys. When it totally comes want, to Riley, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of the aggressive Riley we got prior to his title match with Roka all those years ago, where he flipped out on him in the preview. Yeah, I thought Riley was so good in that preview in that uh, promo. I still say it's his best one. I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of that from him over the years. Yeah, I think you know. I think the thing that's so interesting about. Um, Schmodown competitors are they're a lot like kids and it's just like you, what your kid needs is different based on the day based on the month mm -hmm. based and it's like and it's also individual like based on your kid so I feel like Riley's sort of in the space he needs to be right now and but I agree with you I know I know why that is also compelling like that sort of angry mm -hmm. Riley but I feel like he's really um especially with you know where he's at like doing the good people association uh, as his primary job right now I think I don't know I think like he's just the heads that where he's at is exactly where he needs to be mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna ride it with him and, and how 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 big is it this year to have somebody like a Mark Riley on your faction like how how has that helped with preparation stuff you know I, I, and this is Mark's Mark has not been Mark. I, I actually think that the thing that's making the season for the den right now is actually the people that you're looking at. It's, it's the, the newcomers that are just, well, yeah. Well, and Jay Wade, <laughs> sorry. And, and Paige has been and, huge in assisting that's us. Right. Thank yeah. you. For <laughs> Thank you so much. Paige, for all all of Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, it's, it's, it's I, I have to say it's actually all of it's the, the hunger that the den has starts from the, the, the new members and it definitely gets, um, you know, we've got like the Sauls and the, and the Pauls and the Ben sort of running the show behind the scenes, you know, with the study sessions and whatnot. Mm. Um, but, and, and Rachel for that matter too. Um, so we have like sort of the veterans doing that, 
Mark hasn't been able to sort of really um, jump into that so far. So it's, it's new for me that I have somebody that um, I've never, I've never had a belt holder before. So having a high profile match like him versus Bateman is new for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you count the flirt and flouse versus Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big, that's um, big on a different level. It was big on a different level. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like the, the energy and the sort of, um, the momentum that the faction has going right now is actually coming from the Jesses, from the Thomas Harpers, from the Peggy Gubbins, from the Jaders, from the, I mean, and, and Jader's not new to this at all, but like, mm-hmm. and Ben Goddard, uh, who is our captain. I mean, it's, I feel like it's just this, it's this teamwork makes the dream work situation. And yes, we do have Alonzo and we do have Mark Riley. Um, and they just, because of their life, like they're, they're not as involved yet. And I'm sure when they can be involved, they will be involved. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's actually, this is a young team. This is like youthful energy that I feel like I'm, I'm getting to sort of experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like and sub y'all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and kind of what Kate just said though, too. I think that's like, I mean, I can't speak for all factions, but I feel like it is kind of like that. I think a lot of the younger rookies, the younger players and the rookies are kind of we're new to this so we need to prove ourselves and so that's why we're kind of trying to take charge and just be like all right we need to work our butt off let's do this together like we're in this together so we need to do this together i think that's the best part about being on a faction like and getting to know your teammates and stuff because we're there to help each other out and especially our, the rookies we need to prove ourselves so we want to be there and say let's do this because we need to get this done so yeah and it's infectious i think it it affects everybody else on the team when you have people like jess who are willing to like hey i've got a few free hours like who needs what and i'll just jump in and do stuff uh in, including in areas that i'm not comfortable or familiar with i'll i'll help you in whatever you need because you see a player like paul preston who is behind the scenes inspired i think by folks uh like everybody who's been mentioned and he said it himself he's like i watch the sort of fire that that people bring in the training sessions and it inspires me to step up. And then on the other end of the spectrum, in terms of experience, you get somebody like a Lacey Gillerin, who's a star Wars competitor on our team, but is jumping in. Thank you for mentioning her. No, I mean, she's I I, like Jess, if she missed a singles uh, prep session, like I'm not in a lot of those, but like she's, she's playing mock matches in, in teams matches and singles stuff. She's doing play alongs like that that's just a really unique environment and and it starts like square one is with the people like jess who are willing to uh like they're they're not coming in just like cheerleading they're coming in like substantively what do you need in this moment and here's my time uh that i'm giving to you to to make it work so that's you can't ask for a better environment than that and Lacey, by the way, it turns out Lacey's really good at singles. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> like, she's oh, like, I am it not. Turns- <laughs> it's very good. Thomas, we need you to do the thing that you do. What yeah. did you just, what happened? Thomas? I've got like a mirror here and a <laughs> whole big thing. Don't worry, my brain is still intact. I can remember. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? <laughs> I can remember. We need to insure him. <laughs> so as long as saying- I can sit up and speak and write on a whiteboard, I'm okay. Honestly, so if saying- I need to do it laying down, I don't care. That's I don't care. Just as long as you can write. So what you're saying, Kate, is you potentially have another two division player on your hands. Yeah. Yes. Speak. Honestly, I, I mean, yeah. uh, I think she could do well. She, she really, and she, by the way, she's incredible at Star Wars. There's no mm-hmm. question about that. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to move her out of Star Wars, but what a, what a hidden gem to, to draft somebody like her and be like, I'm excited about her for Star Wars. And then find out she's like this incredible singles player. She's like, well, that's sort of my thing. I'm like, how do you do so many things? <laughs> she's, she's, she's a really, I can't think of a single session that she hasn't been part of. She's nice. always there for everybody. And this probably applies to, to other factions as well. Like Paige, you, you probably bring some of this to, to uh, the usual suspects as well. But I feel like the influx of rookies across divisions, you're getting to see folks with with talents and with uh, specialty areas in what are just like just based on their own like life experiences that are unique. And so you're going to see better matchups, I think, across the board because players like Jess and Paige are I think uniquely different in in some of the things that they're incredibly strong at versus like a Dan Merrill or a Ben Bateman that have to like really, really double down and like work hard in some of those areas that come naturally to them. And and so the Schmodown has gone from maybe like the, the same sort of cut of player 
to now this really broad spectrum. And I think it, it increases the challenge as the matches go forward, as, as rookies get more and more matches under their belts. Cause it like gone are the days where you're like, okay, here's the small pool that I'm playing in. And I know, I know what Roka is good at, what he's not good at. Now it's like, okay, well I'm, I'm experiencing players that are really good in some areas that I never really had to challenge myself in. So I think that's, that's exciting. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that's where the rookies, we get our advantage in a sense, because we've seen these vets play. We know what they're good at and what they're not. So that definitely goes in our favor in a sense, especially when, yeah. like I said earlier, there's no film tape on me besides my first match. So no one knows what I put on the wheel or what mm -hmm. I'm good at besides what you've seen me answer. So I think that's an advantage all of us rookies definitely I feel have. I like you'd be good at Ben and Matt and Ben. I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I feel like you'd be good at that and like any questions that need to be answered outside of the Schmo down about new kids on the block. Also yeah. from I got it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just a I mean, wild, a wild set of guesses. Yeah. yeah. I feel the like she be... are my lovers, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's the right stuff. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Take it step by step, okay, Sona? Oh, yeah. Please don't go, girl. Just please don't go. <laughs> wow. Well, you're my age, dude. If you know, please don't go, girl. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I had babies. I was, I'm born I in 87. Know. I had babysitters oh, listening to that. I, I had That's babysitters fine. listening to it. So I, and I oh. do still have the hanging tough cassette tape at my parents' yeah. place. <laughs> Please don't go, girl. Yeah. That's before Joey. I was say, I've been to a new kids on the yeah. block concert, so nice. <laughs> they hey, played the Fenway, so I had to go. So, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Also, when we what? said when we said BC, when we said BC to when I said BC to Soda earlier, Paige said I was talking about Boston College. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was disappointed when you weren't. So. Yeah. Jay, were you just talking? I'm sorry. You were muted, I no, think. That's fine. That's fine. I was just saying how amazing it was that that, that me as, as an adult went to see Britney Spears for her oops that I did it into her and it was really fun. I'm very uh, jealous. You know, I've seen Britney you're... Spears in concert. She was not very good because it was later in her career. Uh, <laughs> well, was, thank was, I will admit it was a hell of a show when I saw her. <laughs> I've never seen anybody in concert along those lines, but I've been lucky enough. I got to see Joan Jett open for Aerosmith. I saw Bon Jovi kiss twice, Def Leppard. Like, that's my gem. I can't say I've ever seen anybody in the pop genre. I've seen Pearl Jam seven times, dude. You two. Pearl Jam, you see my poster right there? Let's nice. see if you can. There you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Thomas but, uh, Harper's like, I saw Return of the Jedi 7,000 times. I haven't <laughs> seen Star Wars in concert. Like, uh, like now I'm jealous. Like, well, <laughs> the orchestra. Yeah. No, wait, are you serious? There's a Star Wars concert? Yeah, they have like a... Uh, they went, do it with Harry <laughs> Potter, too. Yeah, they do it like oh, a yeah. full orchestra, and they put the movie up. Go so, I, I, I'm in a community band, and one year we played an arrangement of uh, a Star Wars medley that came out in the 70s, and in the middle of our concert, our, our um, baritone player who had the solo for Leia's theme, he has this thing where sometimes he stops paying attention, and he starts playing in a different... Uh, he's a few beats behind everybody else. So in the middle of the concert, I almost jumped out of my seat and strangled him for doing that to Leia's theme. <laughs> I was so mad. Yeah. Pop it right Bring down on his head. Bring up my ukulele real quick. I did. <laughs> I love how they, I, that. I, I just like twinkle, twinkle, the show star. right back to me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, we got a few minutes here before we do our plugs. Um, uh, Kate, let me ask you something about today's free for all. Yes. Uh, who do you predict will be in the free for all from the den? <laughs> <laughs> who do I predict? Yeah. Uh, of course, of, of course. Probably, probably Thomas Harper and I'm Jessica make a, Sloth because I'm make they make a deep run. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, so, by the way, Taco, Taco, by the way, Taco, let me know what your wife's name is and I'll say something to her in the accent. I heard that she misses it. She's the only one on the planet that misses that accent. So I'm going to make sure I give her some love. By the way, um, Paige's accent is real, you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't Sorry, I can't fake it. No, she's, I'll tell oh, you what, she's, it's like, but that's also like my husband's family is all from Dorchester. They're from, oh, they're no from yeah, like I've got, uh, they're, they're down in Worcester and his aunt talks. And she's always just like, I got to go down to Packy. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just like, she says things and I'm like, are you, it's almost, there's like, like old Boston. It's almost, um, it's like part British. There's like, she's like, she'll be like, yeah, no, I have to, I, I, I'm going to go get some half and half. And it's like sort of like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's so funny because I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm only, I'm 
not that young. I mean, I'm 27 years old, but a lot of people are like, your Boston accent's so strong. And I'm just like, I mean, I went to school in Boston, like high school. So that's probably why. Yeah. But um, I was like, I can't help it, guys. My no. parents have very strong Boston accents, though, too. So, so well, Dick, my I sometimes say does, things though. in. Yeah, I sometimes say things in accents that aren't even mine. So <laughs> I've done that a few times. Yeah. On accident. Uh, well, speaking I, of the accents, I just got to say hi to Leslie real quick. Leslie is Taco's wife. God almighty, what kind of name is Taco? What do you have? Yeah, get, you get marry him on a Tuesday? <laughs> you get that one? because it's. I just don't know why people couldn't take this lady seriously. She was <laughs> Anyway, Leslie, you're uh, you're a great gal. Uh, you know, just remember Michael Jordan over Larry Bird every day. No offense to Paige, front nose Paige. <laughs> name, okay, right? I'm good. See you later. <laughs> Thomas, back, Thomas, Thomas and Jess, Kate. how happy are you that I dropped that? <laughs> Kate, I have I to say them by the way. Thank you. So remember when I, in my match, I taught, I was like, let me whip up my Dunkin' Donuts Dunkin', napkin. Yeah. And they thought I was plugging a show or something. And I was like, at least Kate knew what I was talking about. <laughs> talking <laughs> napkin. Oh, another <laughs> show. Like, yeah. I was like, that was awkward. <laughs> but okay. I don't know how Ellis didn't know donkeys. Come on now. And he, yeah, his family's from here. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, I think oh. I think Jessica Schloth and Thomas Harper are going to be in the free for all. Cool for the den, yeah, because they're here right now. So and it starts in forty five minutes. So that's definitely going to be them. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. I'm going to say everyone in the suspects because we're dominating. So I'll t I'll give you yeah I'll I'll Full tell you roster. yeah I'll tell you who Full I think roster. will be appearing. I'll tell you what we're going to have at least one rookie. And at least one surprise from Ooh. the den is what I, I would love say. surprises. And I think everybody else you will probably have anticipated. Now, now, one final question before we wrap up, because it is time to wrap up. Um, hey, you just said something there. And I want to ask you, uh, was there anything, was there, a, uh, was it mandated that there has to be at least one rookie uh, in the free for all? Mm -hmm. nope. Was there nothing said about that? All right. Not I'm at all. No. This was, and I honestly, uh, what I'll tell you is like the decisions I made was, um, it was, um, people came to me and said, Hey, I'd like to throw my hat in the ring for this. And I said, okay, well, I'm planning on this and we'll see if I have a spot, you know? Um, and, but then the same person that is the rookie that came to me, they said also, um, scratch that. I don't want you to consider me for this. I want this. And I was like, that's baller. That person's mm -hmm. going in. <laughs> Yeah. So, so that's that, like, was, that was, yeah. That's like the, the second to last job I had. The last thing I told the guy when I left, I shook his hand and I said, well, when you interview the other two people and realize you want to hire me, give me a call and I'll start Monday. And yes. Dude, dude called me the next day and was like, you're hired. Boom. Yes. So that's Ooh, how that to help me in my life. I was going to say, I feel like that's a page move and that's not a Jess move. Coming up very soon and want to give ourselves as well as you all and the viewers a break to, uh, to relax before that starts. Let's go around the horn here. Uh, my co-host, uh, we'll start with you. Soda. would you mind telling us, uh, what you got going on and where people can find you at, sir? Uh, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at soda underscore the underscore sax man. Um, you can find me over on the Schmoes of the North uh, YouTube channel where every week we do two shows breaking down the week in the Schmodown, one dedicated to the three matches that came up for the week, the other one usually for the pay-per-view. Um, and you can also find me over in the Media Sways Network where I do several shows over there. You've got Recapping the Past where me and Ben Rayner, we sit and we uh, we review seasons of old TV shows that we like. Right now we're in the middle of Friends and uh, very fun show to watch while you're uh, a little on the tipsy side. Um <laughs> And uh, also on uh, Shooting the Breeze, where we just sit down and shoot the shit for an hour with everybody. And then on our flagship show, uh, Get Sweaty, which is just our top five show. Uh, we just recorded one prior to this, which was our top five animated uh, TV theme songs with lyrics. Nice. Uh, lots of good stuff going on at Schmoes of the North and uh, Sweaty's. Uh, I Sorry, dude. I'm not even going to try. Okay. Um <laughs> I always I always get the words mixed up. But, yes, uh, please check all of that out. And I've been on Shooting the Breeze uh, three mm -hmm. times. That is a very fun show. Yeah, uh, especially the one where we talked about cannibalism. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> there is an order, dude. If you're in, in a live or a Donner Party situation, there is a specific and proper order uh, as to who you kill to eat because it will get, if it gets to that point where you have to kill people, you yeah. can't just be willy nilly about what this. The <laughs> yeah. And one of the, my fa personal favorite ones was where the one where I, I decided to have a smoke beforehand and Lou broke my brain talking about existentialism. You can actually see my brain break on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure story. it wasn't the weed that broke your brain. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was a guy in a French accent talking about uh, existentialism. I was like, okay. <laughs> And uh, Thomas Harper, uh, why don't you tell everyone uh, where they can find you at? Yeah, you can come uh, bullshit about Y Wings with me on Twitter. My handle's there. It, as creative as it really is, Thomas L. Harper. And I dropped the link to the uh, that Red Cross event. I'll, I'll just briefly plug that. Go sign up. Take two seconds. And we'll see you on May 4th. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Paige, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you at? Yeah, you guys can check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Front Page News Nine, right there. Um, you guys, I also run my own movie blog on Instagram titled Feature Flicks Without the C. So go check it out. We post uh, movie news, reviews, and all that fun jazz. And yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on. And guys, May seventh, The Bad Batch We're coming in hot. Star Wars shit show. <laughs> the Bad Batch a Star Wars shit show premieres May seventh on this channel with myself. Dean uh, Lewis, Sean AFK, Paige for Betty, and Thomas Harper, and maybe Sarah will stop by too. Um, Jessica, when, does the, when does the Bad Batch come out? Sorry to interrupt. The bad Batch starts uh, May 4th. Oh. And then, yes. And then uh, oh. starting a Star Wars show on this channel called The Mad Batch yes. because I'm crazy and so is everyone else around me. I love it. <laughs> um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Jessica, though, great match this week. Um, thank really, you. Really great. Um, thank you for your time being our guest today. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, why don't you tell folks where they can find you and if you've got anything going on, the floor is yours. I don't really have anything. You can follow me on Twitter if you want. It's just at Jessica Schloth, but that's about it. There you go, Boy, guys. Sweet, I like it. Right to yep, the point. Exactly. <laughs> and, don't, uh, I don't have any shows. <laughs> Mother That's because she's in college. You keep studying, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Get that uh, degree. Again, uh, won't tell everybody where they can find you at. They can, uh, yeah, they can find me outside Thomas Harper's door in the Poconos, protecting him from bear <laughs> <laughs> I won't. The bear up. If <laughs> someone wants to point. animate that, please do. Yeah, I'm just saying. You can eat his legs, just me. don't touch his <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can eat his legs. I just need his hands and his brain intact. Okay, <laughs> uh, I have no use for the rest of them. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm on SEN two days a week uh, on the, Sh the Shmoda Entertainment Network, and then um, Brett and Kate have a play date on the SEN Network. If you're a, a Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. Patron, you're a patron of the Patreon, and then on Instagram and Twitter, I am at Katest Mom Ever, and I am terrible at both. I just, I don't, I check three days, like every three days or so. So, um, but yes, congrats to the sleeper on her rookie mm -hmm. debut. How about it? Yep. yep. Cool, calm, and collected. That's my work. You Absolutely. can turn my air conditioner off if you want. Is that bothering? <laughs> it, it was amazing. Is it getting under your skin? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Is that so, bothering you? What you're saying Especially is she's all sweating bullets in our first match. Yeah. I mean, I had a leather jacket on. I was just like, holy shit, this yeah. sweat right now. Thank God no one could smell me through my camera. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So based on that air conditioner comment, Jessica, are you part Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. You're so kind. So, yeah, so I'm kind in Florida. I need that air conditioning. That's right. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is me doing the Sarah move and reeling it back in. Um, she's done that before on shows, and it's amazing. She, she just just look at you and just go, "Come on, guys." That's it. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, um, I do want to say real quick: three p.m. tomorrow on Schmoes of the North, they're doing a show, uh, free for all coverage. Um, and also our friends over at Let's Get Ready Network tonight are doing a post show. Um, Paige, you're also on Spin from the Reel tonight, right? I am. 8.30. Be there, y'all. We're going to be talking free-for-all and all that fun jazz. So. Yep. So, uh, thank everyone for your support for this show. And go support all the shows. There's a lot of great people, a lot of great content out there. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff for this. 
Uh, you can find me at jwade1134 on the Twitter and stereo and at the Jcast Network on Twitter and stereo as well. Um, and yeah, shit, guys. Uh, I think that's it for me. I ain't got nothing else to say. I, I want to thank you all so very much for your time. Uh, Kate, Jessica, Thomas, Paige, and Soda Man. Uh, thank you all very much. And uh, until next week, everyone have a great and safe week. Enjoy that free for all, guys. Later. Yes. Have fun. You want to hear something funny? The mic wasn't on that whole time. No way. Yeah, for real. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so smooth.